Hey, what's going on guys? It's Alex here from Simple Mods and welcome back to another video. Today I'm checking out a pretty exciting motherboard. This is one of Gigabyte's top Z390 motherboards, the Z390 Aorus Extreme. This is the non-custom water-cooled version as I'll be checking out the Water Forest version as well in another video shortly. So in this video, I'll be giving you guys an overview of the Z390 Aorus Extreme and its features, testing it with the i9-9900K and checking out the VRM temperatures. I'm not doing an unboxing, so if you'd like to see that, then I'll link you to my good friend Nick over at Gearseekers who covered all that. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's an EATX motherboard, so it is a bit wider than your standard ATX, so keep this in mind and make sure your case supports EATX. Being the extreme in gigabytes range and offering a ton of features and performance, you should expect that it also comes with a pretty hefty price tag as well. The Z390 Aorus Extreme comes in at $830 in Australia and $550 in the US at the time of filming this video. So I'll pop some links in the description for pricing as these can change, so make sure you check those out if you are interested in this motherboard. The Z390 Aorus Extreme is a great looking motherboard, it's actually one of Gigabyte's best uh, recent designs in my opinion, they've really stepped it up with their Z390 lineup. It's great to see a neutral color scheme and allowing the user to configure the colors uh, with a ton of RGB illumination features. The Aorus logo and the PCH heatsink lights up and also gives a great glow underneath. The motherboard also has an RGB bar on the right hand side, sort of behind the PCB. This will light up great uh, once inside the case. The M.2 heatsink in the middle here lights up and also the ESS Sabre Hi-Fi logo for the integrated audio. The Aorus Falcon logo on the IO cover looks awesome and its light also highlights the extreme branding on the side as well as offering a nice glow underneath that highlights the beefy VRM heatsink. This is followed by an illuminated integrated IO shield around the back that is a great feature for fiddling around the back of your PC. I'm not going to go through all the ports here as you can pretty much clearly see them all labeled. Some of the highlights are a 10 gigabit Ethernet port, dual Thunderbolt 3 Type-C ports and 4 USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports. And with the integrated lighting it's also good to note that all of the LEDs are actually digital RGB so you can control the patterns, adjust the speed and brightness and things like that with Gigabyte's RGB Fusion software. Going back to the VRM area, you'll see Gigabyte integrated some pretty beefy heatsinks that include a thin array design, which definitely helps keep the 16-phase digital power design under control. There are actually three direct touch heat pipes under there, um, one that you can sort of see on top that touches the chokes, another going underneath the heatsink and coming into direct contact with the VRMs, and another that is actually going around the back and touching the back side of the PCB and the massive back plate. Coupled with the improved thermal pads as well as Gigabyte's uh, 2x copper PCB design to further help dissipate heat. I don't think you should be worried about VRM temps on this motherboard even with extreme overclocking beyond 5 GHz on an i9-9900K. The Z390 Aorus Extreme is of course designed for your latest 9th gen Intel Core processors under the LGA 1151 socket. And I don't imagine people looking at a motherboard of this caliber and chucking anything other than an i9-9900K uh, CPU in there. However, if you do have an 8th gen CPU, perhaps an 8700K, then those are supported as well. For power, you'll get dual 8-pin EPS connectors and a right angle 24-pin power connector, which is definitely great to see. And it's good to know that these connectors feature what Gigabyte calls solid pins. And what that means is that they've been designed to pretty much offer the best contact possible for the best possible current coming from your 24 pin and 8 pin cables. In terms of memory, it supports a whopping 128 gigs of DDR4 uh, dual channel memory. So this does support the newer 32 gig single dim capacity DDR4 RAM. And you can expect to push these up to 4400 megahertz. Of course, with some overclocking, you are not gonna get that straight out of the box. PCIe lane allocation, you'll find three uh, 16 length PCIe slots with uh, metal reinforcing around them. However, only the top one is uh, actually wired at 16 lanes. Uh, the second will be eight and the bottom one will be four. If you are looking at running dual RTX 2080 Ti's, uh, perhaps you can of course run these in NVLink on this motherboard and you'll be using the first two um, 16 length PCIe slots with both of them running at 8x. Another thing to note is that the 4x slot at the bottom actually shares bandwidth with the M.2 port just above it and when you have a PCIe NVMe M.2 SSD installed in here the 4x lane will operate at 2x and then there are also two um, X1 slots available as well. Going a bit further into the M.2 SSD support, the motherboard features three M.2 ports. The first two support drives up to 110 millimeters in length and the bottom one will be 80 millimeters. However, 80 millimeters is pretty much the standard length of popular M.2 uh, NVMe SSDs, such as the Samsung 970 Pro that I have in there. 
So I'm sure most people will be pretty happy with that. And of course the motherboard um, also supports Intel Optane memory and all of the M.2 slots offer a heatsink as well, which is great to see. You also get further expanded storage, of course, with the six SATA 3 ports, uh, and it's great to see this cutout in the motherboard PCB around the SATA ports. That will definitely help with those right angle SATA connectors, and you should be able to shoot these straight to the back of your case uh, once plugged in, thanks to this cutout. In terms of performance testing, I mainly focused on uh, VRM temperatures and seeing how this board handles some pretty high voltages going through the CPU. I did this with some 20 minute blender runs and recorded the highest temperature seen with a K-type thermal probe that was stuck in between the VRMs and the thermal pad. I should also note that the ambient room temperature at the time of testing was 28 degrees Celsius and you'll see all of my system specs listed here. I recorded max VRM temperatures at stock clocks uh, with multi-core enhancement disabled and the max voltage going through the CPU was 1.236 six volts and the VRM temperatures didn't go beyond 48 degrees Celsius after a 20 minute run. I then turned MCE on and this pushed uh, 1.476 volts through the CPU and with that the VRM temperature is only slightly increased to 52 degrees Celsius uh, after the same 20 minute run. So you can rest assured that the VRM cooling has been very well designed on this board. Um, and I should also mention that with the MCE on, um, the voltages were actually quite high for stock clocks. So if you are looking at overclocking the i9-9900K with this motherboard, you should definitely do it all manually. Um, adjust the V-Core um, yourself, as well as the low line calibration and seeing what you can achieve with your chip. When it comes to onboard connectors, this motherboard is pretty packed. There are actually four USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports on the back. Six, if you count the two Type-C ports as well, which are actually Thunderbolt 3, as I mentioned earlier plus a further USB 3.1 Gen 2 internal connector, which also supports Gigabyte's USB turbo charging. There are then two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports on the back and a further two offered by the internal connector, which is also a right angle connector. Then there are also two standard USB 2.0 ports on the back and a further four offered by the two internal connectors. In terms of RGB LED strip connectors, there are two standard 12 volt RGB connectors and a further two addressable RGB LED connectors. These are both found next to each other um, with the first set found at the top here and the other in the bottom left corner next to the front panel audio connector. In terms of four pin fan headers, there are eight found on this motherboard. There are the two CPU and CPU optional fan headers and then there are four system fan headers. These are all um, offering one amps or 12 watts of power each. And then there are also two water cooling pump headers offering three amps or 36 watts of power each. You'll also find further great internal features on the Z390 Aorus Extreme with the integrated power, reset and clear CMOS buttons, debug postcode readout LED, uh, an additional six pin power for the PCIe lanes. There's also a dual BIOS switch and uh, you can actually quite easily pop off and replace the BIOS chip on this motherboard yourself if needed. So that's pretty much my coverage on the Z390 Aorus Extreme uh, from Gigabyte. It's a great looking and performing motherboard with great cooling and a ton of features packed into it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Check out my coverage on the Z390 Aorus Extreme Water Force, uh, which will be up shortly, if not already. Um, so check that out as well if you're interested. Subscribe if you wanna see more and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.